Hello, it's Dawn, and this is Dawn Versations. I'm so happy to have you here. We talk about anything and everything. It's just a potpourri of topics, and that's just the way I like it. If you like surprises and you like variety, this is the show for you. Let's go. Hi, guys. It's Dawn from Dawn Versations. I just decided that I wanted to air this last minute um, because I finished reading Anthony's book and I absolutely loved it. I'm not BSing. I would never just say that. I read it and then I had to put it down for a little bit and then I picked it back up so I could finish it because I wanted to do a podcast episode about it. But I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and air the podcast the same day that I give my review. But it is a great book. And I'm not just saying that because I have interviewed Anthony twice. I, I almost wish I hadn't met him prior to reading it because I could just tell that it was him writing the book after meeting with him. It is so tangible and so down to earth. And he makes everything just um, seem easy, simplistic. And he talks you through it like a friend would. And I have been through emptiness syndrome three times. And there wasn't anything that he missed. It not only focuses on how you deal with them before they leave the nest, Um, I was a single parent, and so he actually wrote a second book that we're going to touch on in this episode, but it's just about the emotions that you go through, the emotional roller coaster of having kids, letting them leave the nest, the relationship that you're left with, with yourself, with your spouse, with your kids, how it changes, and most of all, how you should have a plan a plan to start. And I am not a planner, but after reading it, I wish I would have planned better because it really um, probably would have simplified me and going through the roller coaster process. But Anthony, kudos to you. It was such a great book. I absolutely loved it. I recommend it to anybody to give as a gift. If you know of somebody that is struggling as an emptiness parent or they're dreading it, knowing that it's coming, somebody that's got like maybe a junior in high school or even even if a, an adult child that is about to leave, you know, out on their own, not go to college, just get out of the house and move out on their own. It's a wonderful, wonderful resource, and I just want everybody to read it. So good job, Anthony. I am so excited for you guys to see this episode so that you can hear more about um, his book and also how it helps single parents as well. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, guys. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. We have Anthony back. Welcome back, Anthony. Yay. So glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Let alone of the course. First time. Well, we can relate to so much. You and I, um, you wrote an author, you authored the book, Empty Nester Blueprint, right? Is yeah. that what yeah. the exact title? I just wrote it down. Um, and then you just have another book now. Amen. So let's talk about it. Tell the title because I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. It's the Empty Nest Blueprint for Single Parents. Okay. And, uh, and when I was on last time, I was, I was working on the book and we talked a little bit about it, but as I wrote the first book, uh, it was about the emptiness journey and how we all as parents go through, uh, some, you know, stress and emptiness syndrome and other things that happen when our children leave. And so, uh, and so that book You know, the first half of the journey was background and a lot of good stuff. The latter half of the journey was very couple focused, Mm -hmm. how to re-engage with your partner, how to re-engage with your marriage, right? And, and how to have a plan for your spouse and a plan for yourself and a plan for your children. And I knew when I wrote that book that I was basically alienating single parents and I had a lot of research on single parents, but you have to make choices. Mm -hmm. So am I I going to write a book on couples and how to reconnect or I'm going to write a book for single parents. So I knew there was a second book there. Yeah. So, so I wrote the, the second book. Uh, and, and I, I don't think it, it's not necessarily a better book, but it's, it's more focused, I think, on how to help, uh, a single parent with their emptiness journey. Yeah. So I was thinking about that. Like, so did you have to start all over for your book or did you like take the original and then yeah. spin it? Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to say that I cheated a little bit, <laughs> but I cheated a little bit. Yeah. There are, um, 
There are chapters in the original book about your parenting DNA or how to launch your child or what emptiness syndrome is. Well, those chapters are the same whether you're single, you know, you're a polygamist or you have a spouse, right? Yeah. They're the same. So some of those chapters I kept, I did a little editing, but most of those chapters that that just basically defined empty nesting as a whole, I kept. Uh, but the average empty nester, average single empty nester chapter in the U.S., uh, the exercises are all different. What an what a single empty nester needs to do and focus on is different than what a couple does, right? Because you're you're not focused on a spouse or your marriage. Right. You haven't drifted. You probably already have a divorce. Some of the the warning signs of the first book aren't appropriate anymore. Yeah, that's super interesting. An interesting spin. Was there something that jumped out at you that you hadn't even thought of that single people have to deal with that you? Yeah, didn't? I mean, uh, they they have a very hard job being a single person raising a child, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's financial struggles, um, mostly financial struggles. Right. Time, uh, I mean, just doing something alone versus doing something with someone else is harder, right? Uh, in most cases. Um, and it was funny because uh, I am not a single empty nester. So I, I started a, uh, a survey and tried to collect as much data I could from, from single empty nesters so right. that I could pull all that in. And so in a way, I think that the research is really rich because I have about 75, 100 single empty nesters who filled out a you know 20 plus survey. What are their biggest stressors? Were their children ready when they launched them off to college? What what were their biggest concerns? My first question is, did you do this alone or did you do this with a, uh, a divorced co-parent? And, and mm -hmm. frankly, most of them did it alone. Yeah, uh, I know. I was thinking of that too, how yeah. some people, like I have single friends um, and relatives that, that it was their only child. What a transition that would yeah. be because yeah. you almost live like a married couple. And then a absolutely. the child might be like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Off yeah. to go meet new friends and all that. And then the mom, uh, usually a mom, I hate it to is. stereotype, is left like, oh my gosh, now what? Now yeah. I'm alone. You're you're absolutely right. I mean, it's the that child, even for even for us, and you know, uh, you know, you're remarried, but even for us, you know, you're still you're chauffeuring. They're your drama. They're your stories. They download the yeah. day. You're you're cooking for them. It's a huge part of your life, actively parenting. Yeah. Yep. So the day that they, if you're a, they step out of that house, they go off to work or college or the military, and you're alone. I mean, in many ways, they're your social structure. They're your confidant. Yeah. And, you know, and we talked last time about letting your children grow and get some space and time mm -hmm. uh, when they launch. Imagine, you know, imagine wanting to do that at the same time. They're your cornerstone. I think it's harder for single parents by all yeah. means. Yeah. Well, it's hard for anybody it except is. for the kid. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And they're like, can they, I come home? They just seem to do happier laundry? somehow. I don't know why. <laughs> Well, um, let's see. I wanted to talk about too, how once they're gone, like you're so focused, like you said, on them, their life, everything, then they're yeah. gone. And if you are with someone, then you can redirect and focus on your relationship. But regardless, you're kind of left to focus on yourself a little bit. You maybe you, you let your health go. Maybe, you know, you're, you're not, you haven't been keeping tabs on yourself as much as you should be. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm sure you have noticed and listening that I really am going down the road of your brain health and memory and just what you're eating and longevity. Like, I just find it all so interesting, probably because yeah. now I have the time to really focus on it. Uh, but it, for some reason, it's not a priority when you're raising your kids, you're just like, they would go to the doctor. I'd make sure I'd get them in, but yeah. I would have to be basically my arm dangling off before I would get yeah. myself in there. Yeah. We just don't focus on ourselves. Yeah. You know, the, the emptiness blueprint, right? The couple oriented one, the deprioritization is your spouse because, as we talked about before, you're focused on everything. You're focused on your children. You're focused on your job. You're focused on finances. You can deprioritize your deprioritize your spouse, and 
Yeah. And some, and that can affect marriages. People can drift. We talked about the great divorce, all of that. Right. Uh, go back to that episode for those. Yes. Of you that, it's a uh, very wanna, good episode. There go. I'll post uh, it in the link. <laughs> but for a single parent, right. They are now they're going through the transition to your point. Like, what are they going to do? And I think, um, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about the downside that their identity, their social construct, all of that is probably wrapped around their child. Uh, but what is the great gift that a single parent gets when their child leaves? And it is time. And it is, it is time for them to, to step back and start thinking about what's important to them. Reconnecting with friends, reconnecting and doing what you wanted to do, but you've been too busy actively parenting, right? Reconnecting with family, exercising, eating better, you know, just being able to step back for once in your life, because you're now you've launched this child that you've been two decades planning. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to focus on you again. So I think that the single empty nest gift for that parent is time and taking that time and turning that around to try and make their life what they want it to be now as a single empty nester. Right. Right. It, in, 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 uh, in most surveys, 50%, in, in my survey, 50% of the single empty nesters are looking to reconnect and be with someone else. 50% have no interest in another, uh, entering another relationship with someone else, <laughs> which is kind of funny, right? It's 50 -50. Well, it is. I know that some single people think that having a partner is also like having another child. <laughs> yes. So they're like, hey, I raised enough kids. Yeah. I'm going to take care of me now. I'm sure yeah. there's people saying, ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Or that you've spent all this money on your kid. Maybe you want to go out and buy yourself a nice pair of shoes exactly. for once or exactly the, the fancy makeup. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. Well, I'm excited for you about that book because I think it's such a smart idea. And I really do think you could take the idea in so many different directions. Yeah. I, I'm not going to do the single or the emptiness blueprint for, uh, you know, grandparents or something like that. I, I will say a, a side kind of side sad story. My father passed away last October. And, um. and at that same time, I had launched my book. And so my mom's 85. She read the book. Um, and she said, it's interesting, Anthony, I'm going through the exact same stages an empty nester is right now, right? Her, she is now living alone. Uh, she was cooking meals for my dad for 60 years, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, doing all the laundry, taking care of this man, right? Had this engagement. He was her social partner in life. And then he leaves, right? So it was interesting because I almost thought like, gosh, I could write this book and, you know, the, the emptiness blueprint, the final chapter, uh, yeah, that's which, which so would be true. Yeah, so which, which should the 85 year old, uh, widow be doing? They should be connecting with friends. They should be connecting with family. They should be finding their hobbies. All of those things that a single parent empty nester should be doing, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it was, it was a very weird kind of realization on my part. No kidding. You, know? you hadn't even thought about that. No, and she's just no. associating herself with it throughout. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's super interesting. So yeah. what, what are you focused on now? What are you doing now? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you know, book one, book two, I, I don't think there's another empty nest uh, book in me. I might do a workbook or something like that to sure. kind of help and expand some of the exercises I didn't put in the book. Yeah. Um. But I've been thinking about lately, uh, like next step, life transitions. So maybe Anthony Damascino, the empty nest guy, is really Anthony Damascino, a life transition guy. Okay. So looking at the different stages in life and, and how you want to prepare and what you want to do next. So there was a, there was a movie a few years ago called uh, The Race to Nowhere. And uh, it was about high school kids that are, are being pressured and getting all these good grades for what end, right? They can't get into schools and, mm -hmm. and it's just so much pressure and you're, you're raising miserable children that only care about grades and cheating and trying to get in everywhere they can. Wow. That was the purpose of that. But, but I think retirement to many individuals is a race to nowhere. Yeah. So 
So every conversation I've ever had about retirement, it's a financial goal. Mm -hmm. It's a goal to save enough money so you don't have to work anymore, right? That's retirement. And yeah. you can quit your job and you get your pin and my wife will retire from the school district at some point and they'll all throw her a party. But then <laughs> what, right? I mean, you've done the financial thing. You got yeah. to that point where the person or you feel like you can live for the rest of your life or you're on Medicaid or you have pension or whatever. But but what are you doing? And I have I have four close friends that have all retired for different firemen and, and some for health reasons over the last year or so. Uh, and uh, and they're struggling. Some of them are struggling with mm -hmm. what do I do this next phase? Yeah. My, right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when my dad um, retired, he kind of did it suddenly. He just decided I'm, that's it. You know, things had changed too much at his work, whatever. So he retired. And I remember I, he would, him and I would text all the time, all the time. He'd always send me texts all the time. And I remember coming over to his house one day and, and I was like, are you okay? You just don't seem like yourself. And he said, I just don't feel like anybody needs me anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't, you've got your husband now to help with your car issues or anything, you know, that yeah. some of us daughters rely on our dads for. Yeah. And um, he's like, you've got your husband for that. Your kids are grown. They don't need, you know, grandpa to, it broke my heart. Cause I said, yeah. well, dad, I still need you. I, I still need you for, to be my friend and my guide and, and all that. Yeah. But I think it's normal for men to feel like they have lost their purpose or um, their their reason for being in all these people's lives because they don't go out and provide yeah. for the house anymore. Absolutely. And I think, you know, there's a lot of placating answers like, uh, oh, find your passion and, and volunteer and, uh, you know, work in the garden or take a pickleball or golf or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, and, and, you know, those, those are all good ideas, but, you know, they're not that realistic. And so yeah. what I, what I'm seeing is a lot of people are retiring and then going back to work because after they've done their honey-do list and cleaned out the garage and done one or two trips somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, they're now, uh, you know, well, I I'm bored again. You know, this routine in my life is a little boring, especially if they're retiring and a spouse isn't. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. You know? Yeah, she's still working and you're at home. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I am not going to go back to work, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> for sure I'm that... not. <laughs> but but I do see that. So so to, to and and kind of so is is the is the universe telling me something? And I, I I'm going to bring up two books, right, that, okay. I've, that, okay. that I've read recently. So I read this book called The Measure. I know this will be backwards probably. No, it's actually uh, showing up perfect. Oh, okay, yeah, great. I don't know why. Yay. <laughs> uh, I'm, all, I'm not going to give anything away, spoiler alert, but the the measure uh, the on the planet, when people uh, one day, anyone 22 years or older gets a box. And when they open that box up, there's a piece of string. And that piece of string tells you how long you're going to live. Mm. So if you have a short string, right. if you have a long string, 22 and older. So that's in the first 25 pages of the book. I don't want to give anything away. Whoa. But this is longevity, right, Don? This is what yeah. we kind of have. Right. So, so an interesting kind of concept, great concept, a, a beautiful hook. Uh, and then the book tells a story about different people and, and the string. Um, and it's called The Measure. It was really good. So I read that book. I liked it. Um, and then I read a second book, Die With Zero. And this is your typical nonfiction book. I, I don't want to call it a one note book, but one of those, you know, happiness. And then there's a chapter on happiness. And then the rest is just stories of happiness. Okay. Um, but Die With Zero is about longevity again. Another longevity book. Why am I reading two longevity books in, in two or three weeks? <laughs> This one is, um, and and the person is uh, was a successful energy trader, and he's worth fifty five million dollars. So he has different problems than you and I do with dying with zero. Right? Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, it wouldn't take me very long to die with zero, as opposed to him. <laughs> but but you know, like any good self help book, you pull two or three nuggets out of it, and that yeah. makes it worthwhile. Yes, and. 
And two of the things they talked about is one was there was a longevity. I think it's, I, I went to a longevity site, Don, and I punched in my information. Do I drink? Do I exercise? What are out of these 12 stresses? What are the stresses? Is it traffic? Is it work? Is it mm -hmm. financial? Right. And then mm -hmm. uh, some history and then it spits out a number. Right? Oh, gosh. I know. I know. And that, now we're back to the string, right? It's giving you your <laughs> string could look like this. Uh, but it, it was it was interesting to get a number. Right? Wait, and, what was it? Well, uh, I'm kind of shocked. It was 95. Okay. Which is crazy. I mean, I took another one, a shorter one, and it was like 86, right? Like the average age of a guy, uh, yeah, you know, right. today. The second one, you know, if you don't eat red meat and you don't drink and you continue to exercise five days a week and you're stress-free and you make a new friend or new groups of friends every few months, which oh. is a huge one because it builds your social circles and gives right. you purpose and meaning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can tell by when you take the test, what are the levers, right? Okay. Uh, so I So I thought that that was really interesting right? Like how long yeah. are we going to live? And then, and then the thing that got me thinking, the other thing I liked with die with zero is they talked about your bucket list items, Don, right? So, you know, you and I, you know, maybe we have 20 or 30 more years where we could, you know, rock climb or do whatever we wanted to do. And then, you know, we're probably not doing that at 90, we're not skiing in 90. <laughs> um, well, you're not, I totally yeah, yeah. Oh, Of course you are. <laughs> But there was a thing, you know, uh, think about your, 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 your life in five year increments moving forward. I'm going to kind of make that up the next five, five, 10, 15. And then what do you want to do, Don, in the next five years? And then what do you want to do the next 10? So if you always want to go to New Zealand, but you mm -hmm. know, you can't really go New Zealand in the next year, you could still put it in one of those buckets. Okay. Right? Yeah, And if you, you want as a grandmother to take your grandkids to Disney world, right. 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 Are you doing that in the next three years, Don, or the next three to seven or, and so you want, you do want to do that and you're going to drop that in that bucket, right? Okay. So it, it's a way of looking at your life and trying to plan the experiences you want when you want them. And I think you and I just kind of do this naturally, mm -hmm. but it, but to, but like anything else, if you plan for it, you're more likely to do it. Yeah. Right? Well, and it gives you something to look forward to. Like we all love that. If you're going out of town, it's like, okay, 10 more yeah. days. And yeah, just counting down, like get me there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That makes sense. I like that idea too. Cause while you're feeling physically able is when you want to be able to travel and stuff or and go Absolutely. do those kinds of things. Yeah. And we've all heard of stories of the, you know, the 65 year old that dies two years after they yes. uh, you know, yes. retire or their hip goes out or their knee goes out. And, you know, th their whole plan was to, you know, hike the Appalachian trail. And mm -hmm. yet, you know, they waited too long to get there. So die with zero is kind of that concept. Do things on the front end, spend the money now, die with, you don't have to die with a big sack of money. Right. right. Now he right. has a much bigger sack of money, so it's easier for him to say that. But for us, <laughs> I, I yeah. think from an experiential standpoint, though, it makes sense. You should take that trip to Disneyland with your grandkids as soon as they're old enough for you to enjoy it. Yeah. Did you have you ever made a bucket list? I have. Uh, I, I you know, it's funny. I have and I think I've done most of them. We oh, talked about this. Great. Last time. I have a dream board right in. So I've done most, not most of my dream board, but a lot of those goal oriented things. But I'm a I'm a goal oriented person. So I will put together maybe uh, life 2.0, Anthony's life 2.0 <laughs> oh bucket, bucket list of things I want to do, you know? Yeah. Well, what's uh, at the top of your list? What do you want to do? Golly. Uh, well, I have places I want to visit, right? Okay. There's places, uh, there's places I haven't been, uh, New Zealand. I bring that up because I want to go to New Zealand. Uh, my wife wants to see the Northern lights at some point. Yeah. That'd be neat. Um, and you know, we honeymooned in, in Italy and Greece, but we had no money. I mean, yeah. literally no money. Right, so right, it, it'd right. be nice to go back with a little more money, but, but even those examples, Don, those are, those are big dollar examples, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not the die with zero guy. I can't yeah. just 
go on all these trips, right? Right. And so, uh, you know, back to like Disneyland or Disney World, right? I mean, I, I, I want, you know, I, my kids aren't married, so that will happen. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful they'll have children. And so I can become the grandparent as we talked about. That's super yeah. fun. Yeah. And I do, I do want to do things with my grandkids, right? Yeah. There well, was, if you're going to live to be 95. Though, I know. <laughs> gosh, I've got a lot of time. I, you know, I used to have, I used to hear people say, uh, I took, I took our, I was lucky enough to take our kids on, on some pretty good trips, like to Europe when they were younger. Wow. Uh, and people said, gosh, they won't even remember. Why, why would you take them? Why don't you wait until they can remember Anthony? And then, and then that will be more worthwhile. And then I realized, well, you taking your granddaughter to Disney world is not about your granddaughter. Right. It's about <laughs> Don getting to go to Disney world with their granddaughter, right. your granddaughter and give her the thing she gets to eat as you push her around and watch her eyes when she's going through Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. or whatever that is, right? It's, yeah. it's a, so I have those memories. I, I don't care if Everest doesn't remember the Eiffel Tower and Zoe doesn't, you know, yeah. know what Amsterdam looks like. I got to be there with them and experience yes. it with them. Right, exactly. So not that they're not important, but part of the whole reason for the trip is for me to experience that with them and see them experience that. Yeah. Not necessarily them create memories that they're going to remember. Does that make sense? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I remember um, my kids kind of surprising me saying that they would rather have experiences than gifts when it came to Christmas presents. Cause I would, you know, wait for my Christmas bonus. You know, yeah. I was like Clark yeah. Griswold and, you know, hoping it was a good one. Cause then I could dole out and I would be like, do you guys want cash or do you want me to buy you presents? You know, it was what I had to do. I was a single mom and I, I did with what I could. And as they got older, they said that they would rather have an experience. Like let's do things. Let's, so we did, we did a family trip with um, a few of the grandkids. The other ones weren't here yet. And it was, it didn't all go as planned, which made for great stories. Yeah. You know, we made it there. We did it. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it is, it's the memories. It's that, that sticks out to you as important. Um, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's in the perfect timing. There is no perfect time. Don, it's, it's not the pair of Uggs or the whatever you, it isn't. I mean, the, yeah. you know, your, your child, your daughter, or both your son's you know, you've got them a lot of things in their life. And most of those things are gone, right? They're in the goodwill or they're just gone. Yeah. But, you know, but but they do remember when you took them to Disneyland, right? They right. do remember <laughs> camping with you. They do remember Friday night going to wherever you went, took yeah. them. And right. so I did the same thing this year for Christmas. I only gave my family experiences. Now, I gave Karen a photo album and I, I took pictures of plays we were going to, concerts we were going to, and camping, and I put them all individual photos, right? Went to Walmart and had the photos printed out, <laughs> put them in a thing and gave her that book, right? Oh. And so we just finished the last Christmas concert. We went to a concert train. We saw them here. Uh, and uh, and that was the last of the uh, Christmas gifts. And so here we are, it's September, and we're still doing cool, fun things We've planned, great I planned in December, yeah, right? That's such a great idea. And looking forward to is, is everything you're talking about. And, and the same thing with my kids, all of my kids, uh, one lives close by, one lives far away, one lives with us right now, but they all went to the concert because they all got it for Christmas, right? So this yeah. last week, two concerts with my three kids, their significant others, and my wife. That is the it most joyous thing. It doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, do, right? music anyway just brings people together. So that just gave me goosebumps. That's awesome. Did you say you saw Train? I did. Yeah, yeah. We saw Train with Hall and Oates, and I thought I was going to love Hall and Oates better. No, Train was amazing. Totally agree. Yeah, I saw totally. them with Hall and Oates as well. I was a little disappointed in Hall and Oates because they didn't play all the things I wanted them to play. They kind of medleyed a lot. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it just wasn't when I mean, they were playing all their songs ahead of time to get the crowd going, you know, before they actually came out, I was like, yeah. God, I didn't realize how many hits Hall and Oates actually had. And I had a lot of their albums, but then I don't train was just better. Sorry, yeah. Hall and Oates, not that yeah, they're listening. Yeah. yeah I, I love you both Hall and Oates, but train was <laughs> train is great. I've seen them a lot. So yeah. Yeah. That was a great probably. concert. Yes. 
Okay. Anyway, Anthony, where can people find you? Where can they find your book? Yeah, they can find uh, either book on uh, on Amazon or anthonydamascino.com any, or any other place where books are sold online. Uh, so go out there and, and give it a read. You know, give it a like. As Dawn always says, follow her channel. Maybe <laughs> follow me on uh, Amazon. Uh, oh, and yeah. a review too. Review and feedback is key, right? I mean, you can't say it enough, right? I I mean, I look at your, your episodes and some have, you know, a ton you know, of, of, and you're like, this is great. This is feedback. This is what I want. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. How, so it's your daughter that's left at home, right? Yeah. She graduated. Uh, I had two graduate within two days, one with their masters in Southern California and then one in Oregon, Zoe, and she moved back home from, from, uh, university of Oregon. Okay. So I, she said, don't worry, dad, I won't stay, uh, around too long and, and cramp your brand. Uh, <laughs> So she's, she's, she got a job. She got a job while she was in school, a career job while she was in school. She Good. worked for a marketing, marketing company. And, and so she's saving right now, uh, living with mom and dad, saving money. And she will probably as all Bay area, uh, teens or excuse me, young adults in their twenties do, she'll probably go move to San Francisco for, uh, you know, with a few roommates for a year or two and then figure out what's next. Yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, it's great talking to you again. I love having you. I'm sure you'll come back. I just love talking <laughs> to you. So we'll, we'll have you back on, but yeah, go out and get his books. They sound great. I need to read the, the sing. <laughs> we'll take a still for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Anthony. Okay. We'll thank you, Don. I appreciate you having me on. Of course. Anytime. Bye-bye.